Here's what's happening right now. Sunshine is faded and the November chill has settled in. Is this something that we'll have to deal with for a while? Karen. Also, first and four, cutting Kwame Kilpatrick's debt. Federal prosecutors make a move that could save the former mayor millions of dollars. Paula. Hey guys, this might look like an assembly, but it is actually the seventh grade class of Detroit Country Day. They are getting ready to have a real time debate with real issues and they're about to take a vote for the presidential election. And this mother lost her little boy and now she's making an unusual request on social media. What she's looking for, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick could cut millions of dollars from his court-ordered restitution, the bill he has to pay to the city after a huge pay for play scandal. Now, after years of haggling, his debt could be cut from $4.5 million to $1.6 million. Prosecutors made the request in a filing after a federal appeals court previously ruled the amount was miscalculated. Kilpatrick is currently serving a 28-year sentence on public corruption charges. A judge will have the final say on that restitution. We're also learning more about a fatal accident making news during the morning rush hour. Investigators say a 38-year-old woman was killed this morning after being struck by a car on I-96. It happened on the ramp from eastbound I-96 to Davison Avenue. State police say the woman stepped in front of a silver Cadillac while trying to cross the freeway, and the driver just couldn't avoid her. The driver did stop at the scene. No word on any possible charges. New this afternoon, a Romeo High School assistant football coach is charged with soliciting students for sex. 25-year-old Hector Tanner is facing multiple felony charges. Prosecutors say the freshman coach used one of the high school's tablets to chat with two female students on Twitter, one 15, the other 16. One student's mother found some of those tweets. Prosecutors say the Twitter conversations show Tanner asking the girls to keep quiet for fear he would get canned or go to jail. Moving now to Garden City, where investigators are trying to figure out what caused this fire at a hospital training facility. This is on the 6,000 block of Harrison, right by Rosa Parks Boulevard. We're told the building was an old elementary school and now serves as a training facility for Garden City Hospital. Employees were forced to evacuate and no one was hurt. Time now for our first look at the forecast. A pretty nice fall day out there, Ben. You know, not too shabby, Karen. Very close to what we would typically see for this time in November with those high temperatures currently in the mid 50s, slightly warmer here in Adrian, which is at 58. The winds are not all that bad. Haven't seen a whole lot of sunshine, but we will make up for that in the seven day forecast. That's for sure. The other thing we're watching tonight is the potential for at least a shower. What you're seeing mostly here on Fort Live radar is not actually making it to the ground. This stuff up here is there's just some sprinkles up there between Big Rapids and Gladwin on their way down here. So tonight we could see just a rogue raindrop. After that, a whole lot of bright skies, and we'll tell you what that does for temperatures coming up. Karen. We are just five days away from the presidential election and the race is tightening up. A new CNN poll showing Clinton leading Donald Trump by just 4%. Our Devin Skillion joins us live in the newsroom and Devin, all the heavy hitters are on the campaign trail today. Certainly among the heaviest of hitters would be President Obama, Karen, and he is doing what is considered a historic campaign blitz for Hillary Clinton. Her campaign advisors hoping that he can rally young people to get out and vote much as he did back in 2008. Uh, the president on the campaign trail this entire week in fact, hoping to convince voters in the key battleground states that Hillary Clinton has their back. In Miami today, the president was questioning Trump's temperament if he should be elected and crediting Clinton's work as Secretary of State for making him a better leader in the White House. Trump is also in Florida fighting for that state's important electoral votes. He's focusing on the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server. She is likely to be under investigation for many, many years also likely to conclude in a criminal trial. She made me a better president. She understands that this stuff that we do, the challenges we face, aren't abstract. They mean something to real people. 
president went on to slam Republican leadership in Florida and announced his support for Patrick Murphy, who is running against Marco Rubio for a seat in the Senate out of Florida. Uh, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump holding rallies in North Carolina tonight. That's where Clinton right now polling slightly ahead of Trump, but Karen, well within the margin of error. Tight race in a lot of places right now. Thank you. Sure is. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. Meantime, we do have some new information on Hillary Clinton's visit to Detroit. She will be here tomorrow for a get out the vote rally. Clinton will be at the Eastern Market. Rally starts at 315. We will have live coverage tomorrow right here on First at Four. And as we mentioned, election night is just five days away. So make sure that you have that Click on Detroit app to get all the push alerts and all the results you need. Just search WDIV in your app store and the app is free. Many adults might be jaded by this long presidential race, but for local students, it's a living civics lesson playing out in real time. You're about to meet seventh graders immersed in presidential issues, and they put that knowledge today to the test. Our Paula Tupman is live outside of Detroit Country Day Middle School. So Paula, explain exactly what's going on with these students. Well, Devin was just talking about some heavy hitters. I met some pretty heavy hitters myself here today. We're talking about the seventh graders, and they've actually been immersed in this whole election process as part of their curriculum. They've gotten it in math and civics and history. And then, of course, today, they actually held their big debate. Hillary Clinton will promote the best practices among law enforcement and how they work with the authorities to make and that they maintain build trust between local law enforcement and communities. Students have been researching the issues and while they can't vote, many have taken the idea of understanding what's being said and how it affects them. I identify as a Democratic, but my dad and my mom don't know who to vote for because they have a pretty high in favorability rating. From cutting the business tax rate down to 15% or making a flat tax rate for everyone in the United States, the Republican Party will work hard to make sure that our economy thrives. The Republican Party believes to align with mine, and even though the candidates may not in particular this election cycle, I knew that overall I looked at the Republican Party platform, and that's what I agreed with. I um, identify more with Democratic. But what if we could stop bad people from getting those guns in the first place? Right now, that might not make a huge difference, but in the future, 10 years, 15 years, that could make a massive life-saving difference. Especially for immigration and the Syrian refugee issue, um, like, I understand that these families, like, they're in trouble. They don't have a home. And, like, my mom was trying to tell me, like, what if this was us? But I also understand how the Republican Party feels. Like, what if someone does come in? So Donald Trump has said a lot of things about like banning Muslims. Well, my dad's not a Muslim, he's a Hindu, but he comes from India. You know, my dad migrated here, so did my mom. They both came here for the American dream. And we cannot just go to every single house, raid it, and see if there's an illegal immigrant in there. It's not possible. The process of performing a thorough background check on thousands of people who want to come into the, our country is an incredibly difficult task. Looking at my classmate, I want to say I'm friends with him because, you know, we can put aside our differences and we can look at it as America. We are all founded by immigrants. So we can look at it and say that, you know, we are, uh, we celebrate our differences, but we also celebrate how can we be friends and how can we grow together. Oh, okay, so who are the children and who are the adults here? Let me tell you what I learned, Karen. I am not smarter than a seventh grader. These guys really did their homework. And what was so interesting is while you might think that their ideas and their opinions reflect their households and their parents, they didn't really. They aligned somewhat, but these kids had a lot of their own ideas that they developed from doing their own research. And of course, they are going to do the big vote, the school-wide vote, on Tuesday. We hope their parents do the same. No matter how you vote, we hope you show up at the polls and vote. You Karen, know, back to you. I was going to say, Paula, their words were just so refreshing. They took the time to educate themselves. And I have to say, I feel kind of confident in the fact that they are our future leaders. Yeah, you know what, Karen, that's a great point because they really had a grasp of the issues. Now, we've, you and I have been covering this election all uh, campaign season, and we've met people who don't have a grasp of the issues. These kids actually have a grasp of the issues. Go talk to them if you have any questions. They've got the answers. Some smart kids. All right, thank you. Paula Tutman reporting live today in Beverly Hills.
First at four, we're on top of stories making headlines all around the world on your Thursday. The Brexit battle is not over in Great Britain, a high court ruling says. The country cannot leave the European Union without another vote in Parliament. The Prime Minister's team says the decision of the voters in a June referendum is enough to trigger the exit. There will be an appeal to that country's Supreme Court with another hearing expected next month. Moving now to Iraq, soldiers have entered the city of Mosul for the first time in more than two years. This video shows Iraqi forces patrolling the city's far east side. ISIS has been in control of Iraq's second largest city since 2014. This sign of progress has sparked a new statement from the leader of ISIS. He is urging followers to spread attacks to Turkey, to Saudi Arabia or Libya, seeming to acknowledge ISIS will need a new home base if it loses Mosul. The trial of a former police officer charged in the shooting death of an unarmed black man got underway today in Charleston, South Carolina. Michael Slager shot Walter Scott eight times after Scott ran away during a traffic stop in April of last year. Video of the shooting sparked public outrage. Slager is charged with murder. Opening statements were given in front of a jury made up of 11 white jurors and one black man. Slager is facing 30 years to life if convicted. Ahead first at four, sexism in Hollywood. A successful actress writes an open letter about one of her worst experiences with a real pushy producer. Also, open for business, three big stores are bucking an anti-shopping backlash. Up first, a possible fire danger in millions of homes. Why you should check a common appliance in your house and you might need to unplug it right away. Details in minutes, next. Fire, smoke, and property damage. We have an important Help Me Hank alert alert right now for you. We're talking about nearly three and a half million dehumidifiers. They're being recalled because they can overheat, smoke, and catch fire. They were manufactured by a company called GD Medea, but sold under more than 50 brand names, including Sunbeam, Honeywell, and GE. Now, there are 38 reports of smoke and fire with $4.8 million in property damage. No injuries have been reported, but if you have one of these dehumidifiers, stop using it, unplug it, contact the company for a replacement or a refund. And most importantly here, we do have a link to all of the brand names on the consumer page because there are many you need to check out. Just hit up, click on Detroit.com to find that out. Black Friday deals already starting to roll out. JCPenney says its special discounts will appear the day before Thanksgiving. One executive says research shows half of all shoppers plan to buy at least one gift before Thanksgiving. The department store will be open on the holiday. JCPenney, Kohl's and Macy's are all opening on Thanksgiving, even as other retailers have decided it's better to close on the holiday. You'll want to check with your favorite stores to see if they're open before heading out on Turkey Day. And Ben is back. Beautiful day out there. I mean, it feels like it's a perfect fall day with the colors, the cool breeze, but nothing like too cold. Yeah, we went from too warm to too cold, and now we're sort of Goldilocksing yeah. it out here. Goldilocksing uh, it out. Is that a weather term? I like it. Yeah, I learned that in school. <laughs> 50s out there right now, 56 in Metro. Haven't seen a ton of sunshine, although it's starting to peak out. I don't think that we're going to see a whole lot of it today. We're going to make up for that, though, as we get later on into the forecast. Pressure's high. Usually that means clear skies, but it's actually trapping some moisture near the surface, uh, and that could keep the clouds around at least to the start of tomorrow. As far as temperatures go across the states, a lot of 50 degree ratings, 40s here in the UP. So again, for this time in November, uh, not a whole lot different than what we would typically pick up. Here are the showers that, that we're watching and again everything that's showing up here uh, from the thumb south is most likely uh, actually not making it to the ground. This is just middle level moisture. It's being picked up by some of the radars up north. Nevertheless, could see a sprinkle in here as we get later on into the evening hours, but notice it's going to be fairly light and really quick moving, so not going to last very long. The actual upper level trough will sweep through and tomorrow morning if we see some low clouds to start, they're not going to last very long. Sunshine's going to win out and we'll stay mostly sunny for the balance of the day tomorrow. High temperatures will respond as we get into the weekend, but tomorrow it looks like uh, things are going to stay on the normal side of things. 
as we finish out Friday. Here's your four zone forecast. These are low temperatures tonight and some of the warmest numbers are going to be in our metro zone. 43 is going to be the magic number there in our south zone down towards the Ohio State line. A little bit chillier. 41 in Tecumseh. Blissfield, you're going to be at 42. And as we look in the west zone, there could be a couple 30 show up here, mostly up in Genesee County. Fenton Flint, both at 39 degrees and those numbers get just a little bit milder as you work your way down towards Michigan and Avenue. North zone, uh, north of M59, it's where some 30s are hanging out. 39 in Sandusky on down to Lapeer. Everybody else in the low 40s with some of the milder numbers out here towards Port Huron at 43 degrees. So into the afternoon tomorrow, high temperatures mid 50s and we will get that sunshine back. Skies are going to stay mostly clear going to tomorrow night and our highs over the weekend will be in the 60s. 60 on Saturday, 63 as we end daylight saving time on at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, and then those numbers uh, start to sort of plateau as we get into next week. By the way, we've kept the forecast dry on Election Day Tuesday. It looks like that chance of rain has been eliminated, so we've got a dry forecast beyond any sprinkle tonight on through Thursday of next week, Karen. Trending stories next, first at four, including the actress talking about and taking a stand against sexism in Hollywood. Also, a grieving mother's unusual quest, the request she's making on social media that's getting a lot of attention from all around the world. Next. One of our top trending stories today really is a heartbreaker. It's about this grieving mother right here in Washington State. She's launched an unusual search through social media. Her young son died and his heart was donated to another child. Daisha Cheney wants to meet the family to hear her child's heart beating one more time. It would bring me a little bit more comfort to know that a piece of him is living on and helped another family be able to take their baby home. Cheney set up a Facebook account and had been bombarded with messages from as far away as Australia. The page is called Fighting for Maliki. All she knows is that her son's heart went to a little girl similar to a 17-month-old somewhere on the West Coast. Actress Mia Kunis is making some waves today in Hollywood. She posted a new essay online talking about blatant sexism in the movie business. She says there was a time when she refused to pose half naked on the cover of a men's magazine to promote a film. And a producer pulled out that old cliche, you'll never work in this town again. Well, she said no, and she's still working in Hollywood. Kunis is hoping more women will speak out. No surprise here, but this story trending all day long. Many of you are probably dragging a bit today, drinking lots of coffee after that amazing World Series game. Chicago Cubs won 8-7 to seven in really a dramatic fashion. Now, there have been so many tweets and Facebook postings about the Cubs' first win in 108 years. Here is one from longtime former Congressman John Dingle. He jokingly tweeted, quote, No, I didn't see their first World Series win back in 1908. <laughs> Love his humor. Also, Tigers' Justin Verlander tweeted, Congratulations to the Cubs. Been a long time coming. Hashtag understatement of the century. Did you get any sleep at all last night? I'm pretty tired. I think a lot of people are. But oh, it was such a fun night. Still ahead. Speaking of that, we're going to keep that World Series celebration going. A new video is really burning up the internet. More than 100 years of happiness in one song. It's coming up next. Believe it or not, I was not the first guy to sit next to Carmen on this set. News 4 tonight with Mort Krim and Carmen Harlan. Mort Krim and Carmen worked side by side for almost two decades. And now as Carmen gets ready to retire, Mort looks back on their amazing partnership. There's a certain thing called chemistry. And when it happens, it happens. And I think Carmen and I uh, very early on discovered and, and management discovered that we had that that certain something called chemistry. Tonight at 11, Mort reminisces about co-anchoring with Carmen, his favorite moments, and why he and Carmen once stopped talking to each other. Join us tonight at 11. My kids never... Finally, first of four, you can't blame Cubs fans for so much celebrating after waiting 108 years to win the World Series again. Yeah, you may have seen the Eddie Vedder video for the song All the Way that was dedicated to the Cubs. Well, today it's got a brand new ending. Check it out. Someday we'll go out of the way. I don't know why it brings a tear to my eye. Vetter reportedly wrote the song at the request of Ernie Banks in 2007. The original music video was produced during the Cubs' 2008 playoff runs. 
more than a few tears have been shed by Cubs fans watching this. And definitely very popular on social media. What an, what an ending to that game. By the way, I did post it on my Facebook page if you didn't see it all. And if you want to see more, we're going to end the show with that. So thanks so much for joining us. First at four, Inside Edition is next. We are one with the Cubs, with the Cubs we're in love. Yeah, hold our head high.